Welcome to Darnley Cyber Cafe, your podcast for cybersecurity, IT, technology, and business news. Now, introducing your host, Darnley Gresson Jr. Hello, everyone. And thank you for once again coming to my cafe, episode 46, Time to Abandon Google Chrome. In this episode, I will be aiming my crosshairs on Google Chrome. Yes, the beloved browser used by over 2 billion people. This application has around 65% market share compared to the under 20% share held by Safari. If Google is all that great, used by billions, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this well-used piece of software, right? Well, if you ever listened to any of my previous podcasts, you probably already know that I'm going to tear Chrome a new pixel in a moment. In a loving way, of course. As a great champion of digital privacy, I would be the first person to tell you to lay off the Chrome as fast as possible. Google itself, over the many years, have been in numerous news headlines illustrating the collection practices that this very powerful company utilizes to enhance user search experience, along with lining ad agencies with buckets of money. Google has simply become too big and too powerful. Now, if you want to stop listening right now, you can take anything home right now. It is it is now time to ditch Google Chrome for good, period, end of story. For those who are now still listening, understand that Chrome is tightly knit with Google's data gathering infrastructure, including services such as Google Search and Gmail. Given its size it has allowed it to take the market dominance that allows it to set up new standards across the web. Chrome is Google's most powerful data collection tools. And with 65% market share, you cannot even begin to fathom the amount of data this application is really collecting on a daily basis. Google has been under fire from privacy advocates, including their rivals and government regulators to end third-party cookie collection. Especially with the growing privacy laws in Europe, Google has went so far to replace their cookies with a quote-unquote privacy-preserving tracing technology called FLOC, which critics say this will give Google even more power at the expense of its competitors. Chrome user base, again, that whopping 65% or 2 billion users, whichever one strikes you the most. Now, according to a report from Apple's iOS privacy labels, Google Chrome can collect data, including your location, search, and browsing history, user identifiers, and product interaction data for, quote-unquote, personalization purposes. Google even graciously allowed their users the ability to save your bookmarks and passwords to your very own Google account. Now, unlike rivals such as Safari and Firefox, Chrome links its data to devices and individuals. Now, for those who have said to me, over the many times, over the many years. Well, Darnley, this is okay. I don't have nothing to hide. Or nothing I'm doing is of any significance anyways. And everything I'm doing is above board. Now, when I hear this, I get a mix of emotions brewing inside of me. Which, (laughs) in return, (laughs) I always say tongue-in-cheek. Well, will you be okay if I join you going into the washroom. You can leave the door wide open and I can watch you do your business. Well, I know what you do in there. So you got nothing to hide. 
right? <laughs> yes, this is <laughs> this is a bit of satire. And personally speaking, I'd rather not do that, but it really gets the message across. Usually by a face of, I believe, disgust or concern or one of the one or both. Anyways, the point here is that digital privacy has always been vital. And this is why you have passwords on your accounts or locks on your mobile devices. Or, well, since we're even on this topic, locks on your washroom doors. Now, our increase, our increase of digital online presence and internet activities threaten our privacy as this information is at risk every single day. Why? I mean, this is why your privacy is important ever more so ever than before. When critical data gets into the wrong hands, significant damage can occur. From a hack at a multinational organization can put valuable information to both threat actors and or competitors. This also exposes personal information to strangers who will manipulate the data against you or your loved ones. Now, keep in mind, the time of attack can be now or can be well into the future. This is always unknown. Now, this is why I always caution people who share data, plethora of data, over social networks. Their privacy will be lost at a certain point in time. You don't hear me saying that you should shut everything down and become a digital hermit. No. You are still welcome to use social media and the internet to your liking. However, always have a certain mindset on the amount of information you share. Always ensure you keep a level of privacy about yourself, your family, and your loved ones, as many of this information is in digital stone, as I so like to call it, which which I mean basically it means that it will never really go away. Because this data is collected in various archiving servers, which stores every single byte of information out there. Now, considering Google Chrome, the browser will need to handle browsing data. It can also siphon off large amounts of data about your activities to Google. Now, this report came from uh, Rowena Fielding, uh, a founder of a privacy consultancy called Miss IG Geek. She quotes stating that if you are using Chrome to browse the internet, even in private mode, Google is watching everything you do 100% of the time, 24-7. This data is used for Google to collect a detailed picture of your personality, interests, vulnerabilities, and triggers. Once you connect your Google account to Chrome, more information from other Google uh, products, including Gmail, can paint a very accurate picture about you. Now, Chrome data can be used to geolocate your history from Google Maps, the metadata from your Gmail usage, which also includes emails you send and receive. Also, who you interact with both offline and online the apps you use on your Google, or sorry, your Android, Google Android phone, and apps you download with Google Play, and also the purchases you make in Google Pay. This paints a very accurate picture of yourself to Google, like it or not. Again, do you still have something to hide? So let's be honest here. Even from the horse's mouth, Google has said its privacy and security has always been at the core benefits of the Chrome browser. Things from safe browsing that protects phishing and malware and additional controls to help manage your information in Chrome. Now, but what does this really matter? What does does not change is the level of data collection possible along with Google's dominance and ad-driven ecosystem. So basically, as long as people continue to use Chrome, those 2 billion people, so to speak, there are no signs of Google stopping. 
we need to understand and accept that Chrome provides Google with truckloads of behavioral and demographic, demographic data, control over users' browsing experience, and basically, essentially, shaping the web to Google's advantage of continued dominance worldwide. Okay, so thanks for that information, darling. Are there ways to lock down your account to avoid some of these measures so I can continue to use Chrome? Well, yes, there is. And if you still want to continue to use Chrome, that's, I guess, okay. But here's something that you can do. Uh, simply preventing your browsing data to be collected by Chrome, uh, you can disable this uh, by the sync of your um, your Google Chrome to your Gmail account and turning off third-party cookie tracking. The other option is to ditch Chrome altogether. Um, there are plenty of feature-rich privacy browsers to consider. Um, to name a few, such as Firefox, Brave, and DuckDuckGo, all which do not hand Google a single byte of your data. Now, I understand all this may not come as a surprise to many of you, yet you are still addicted to using Chrome, and I understand why. But take it from someone who sees and deals with these various security vulnerabilities with Chrome, it is not worth it. Once you take the plunge, the time and energy from removing yourself from this data-collecting eating monster, you will breathe a little easier and feel less violated in the long run. I should create a new hashtag, hashtag uh, Chrome Sober, <laughs> to those two billion still using this software. The time is nigh, people. Thank you for stopping by Darnley Cyber Cafe with your host, Darnley Gresson Jr. We hope you enjoyed your stay. Next time you swing by the cafe, bring a friend and share the show with them. That's all for this episode, folks. We will see you next time.